Meditate, 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 meditation. With the announcement of Darius Cosmic Revelations, I thought I'd use this opportunity to take a look at the original versions of both games that'll be on that collection, those being G Darius and Darius Burst. I'll be starting with G Darius since it's the game I'm more familiar with. G Darius is the follow-up to the absolutely fantastic Darius Gaiden. Many fans of the Darius series typically cite either Darius Gaiden or G Darius as their favorites. G Darius initially came out in 1997 in the arcades and took advantage of the three years between it and its predecessor. While Darius Gaiden went for a completely 2D sprite based game, G Darius takes the series into the third dimension, though gameplay still sticks to the 2D side scrolling. For an early 3D polygonal game, G Darius doesn't look too bad. In the same way that Katamari Damashi's low res polygon style still looks good today, G Darius has a certain art style that makes everything look intentional rather than an early attempt at 3D models. Something that helps is that there aren't any humans seen during gameplay. The player and all the enemies are supposed to be either spaceships or mechanical fish, so the harsh geometry they sometimes have feels more like a side effect of them being robotic rather than the limits of the graphics at the time. On a personal note, I find genuine attempts at good looking 3D models from the 90s to be more aesthetically pleasing than the more detailed, cheap 3D models you see in a lot of games nowadays. Darius Burst partially included. Gameplay stays true to the classic Darius formula fans have grown to love. After beating the first zone, players get to choose where they want to go next. This time around, zones are named after the Greek alphabet, and while there are fewer stages in total this time around, players are given the opportunity to take different paths throughout each zone. Each zone has two paths to choose from, labeled with letters of the alphabet, so for example, Zone Alpha, which is the first zone, has two paths you get to choose from, Path A and Path B. Depending on the path that the player chooses, they will go to different areas and fight different bosses. In the case of the first stage, Path A leads up into the air where the player will encounter a mini-boss similar to those found in Darius Gaiden and go on to fight Eclipse Eye. If the player chooses Path B instead, they will not encounter a mid-stage boss, but they will still run into Eclipse Eye, albeit a different colored one with different attack patterns. Each zone has a unique final boss with two variants depending on which path the player decides to take. One of the most satisfying features from Darius Gaiden was the ability to capture captains of each zone and recruit them to fight alongside you. G Darius takes this idea and runs with it. Gone are the black hole bombs and in their place are capture balls. These can be used to mind control almost any enemy and get them to fight alongside of you. Each enemy has a different effect, some acting as shields, some firing forwards, some backwards, others have homing. Many of the bigger enemies, such as the mid-stage bosses, have gold plating on them that must first be destroyed before firing a capture ball at them, but if you can manage to get one of these bad boys on your side, they can be incredibly powerful and their large size can help shield you from enemy attacks. A lot of them also have a secondary attack that can be done by doing a circle motion with your ship. This is usually a more powerful attack, but will usually stop your companion from shooting for a few moments afterwards. The bosses in G Darius are a spectacle. Each one has an in-engine cinematic intro that the player can, thankfully, skip. <laughs> They're cool to watch the first few times, but if you're practicing for a 1cc or something, they can really start to get annoying, so having the option to skip them is much appreciated. Many of the bosses are your typical Darius fare. Large fish are marine life in space with lasers and bombs trying to kill you. However, some go for a much more spectacular approach. Queen Fossil and Fire Fossil, for instance, are enormous and end up being half of the entire zone. Right before the battle with either of them, you pick your route, so you essentially get to pick which attack patterns you want to fight against. This is a really cool idea, but I don't feel like it's executed all that well. Darius Gaiden tried this in Zone M with the boss Titanic Lance, who is incredibly difficult and quite frankly unfair. Many of his attacks weren't telegraphed or were actually undodgeable without being fully powered up. While the big bosses in G Darius are definitely more fair than Titanic Lance was, they do tend to drag on. 
I think the main issue is that they fly around splishing and splashing in the clouds a lot and don't feel like they're really all that much bigger than the other bosses in the game. This makes the fight feel like they go on for a really long time and it's hard for the player to tell how much progress they're making. At least with Titanic Lance, the player was slowly destroying his body, making their way to the head. With a boss like Queen Fossil, it's hard to tell how close she is to being defeated until she changes color to show that she's low on health. Another feature added to the bosses are their beta beams. At some point during the battle, the boss will charge up their laser and fire a red beta beam, but the player then has the opportunity to fight back. As long as you have a captured enemy, you can convert their essence into an alpha beam to fire at the boss. If the beta beam and alpha beam collide, the player must mash the fire button as fast as possible, entering a laser beam battle with the boss. As long as the player mashes fast enough, the alpha beam will overpower the beta beam and become stronger, often resulting in the demise of the enemy. The player also has the option to sacrifice their mind-controlled companion to set off an explosion that will destroy most enemies and enemy bullets. And that's Judarius in a nutshell. While I can see why people say it's their favorite, there are a few things about it that I just have a hard time getting behind. First of all, G. Darius suffers from what I like to call Mega Man 2 bullshit. Allow me to explain. If you've ever played Mega Man 2, you'll know it's a really good game, but there are some parts of it that no player would be able to beat on their first try. I think the best example is the fourth stage Wily boss. It is only weak to the crash bomb and is only possible to defeat if you have a full crash bomb meter. If you use even one crash bomb without refilling before this point, the boss becomes unbeatable. Essentially, Mega Man 2 bullsh** is a part of the game that is difficult not because it's challenging, but because it's unpredictable without prior knowledge. G. Darius has a lot of this. There are many bosses that will just run into you and kill you without telegraphing it. There are also attacks that are impossible to avoid without just knowing where the safe spot is ahead of time. And there are also attacks that are impossible to dodge if you're on the wrong side of the screen. I'm all for a challenging shoot 'em up, but having to rely solely on memorizing when a boss will do an untelegraphed attack is not fun. On top of that, G. Darius has a pretty brutal difficulty curve. Since there are only five stages now instead of seven, the game gets really difficult on the fourth stage. Arguably more difficult than Darius Gaiden gets on its sixth stage. G. Darius really wants to end by being a bullet hell, but quite frankly, it's not designed to be one. A good bullet hell game is about pattern recognition and weaving your way through enemy patterns not necessarily fired directly at the player. G. Darius certainly has the amount of bullets on screen to qualify it as a bullet hell, but there aren't any patterns to dodge aside from the bosses. Enemies just fire right at the player, and the meta quickly goes from dodging fast-moving bullets to kill everything before it can fill the entire screen with an undodgeable wall of bullets. I've played a lot of Darius games and other shoot-'em-ups, and the difficulty in G Darius just feels plain unfair at times. Now, it could be possible that I'm not using the capture balls to their full potential, but it's honestly very difficult to capture the enemy that you want to on these levels since the player is so limited in their movement due to the large amount of on-screen objects. Lining up your shot with the capture ball can be tricky enough already, but for some reason the fire button in G Darius causes the player's ship to fire four times in a row, and most enemies die in a single hit. I've found this to be particularly intrusive on the third zone, no matter what flavor of the Greek alphabet. They all start out in an asteroid field, you cannot capture asteroids by the way, and there's only one or two waves of enemies that come by. However, even if you take your finger off the button as soon as the enemies come on screen, the ship will continue to fire four more times, often killing all of the enemies you wanted to capture. I cannot fathom why they added this firing mechanic to a game so focused on capturing enemies. It's frustrating and isn't fair to the player. This weird type of semi-automatic firing didn't exist in previous entries and I don't think I've ever played another shoot 'em up that does this either. And while on the topic of weapons, I'm really not a fan of the upgrade tree in this game. It reverts back to the original Darius style of upgrading. You start off with forward missiles, then a single laser, then the wave. The issue is, it 
It takes so many weapon upgrades to go from one level to the next. Getting to the laser isn't all that tough, but getting to the wave from the laser is incredibly difficult. It takes seven red orbs in order to upgrade your laser to the wave. What really makes this a nightmare is that the laser is only ever a single shot. It just gets longer, meaning it's much more difficult to hit enemies since you have to be so accurate. In Darius Gaiden, rather than getting a longer laser, each upgrade would add another laser, widening your shot. On top of that, there were many more stages of weapon power in Darius Gaiden than in G Darius, so while death would set you back and it was possible to get reset all the way to the bottom, it didn't quite feel like as steep of a climb to get back up. In G Darius, if you die you get reset to the first level of whatever shot you currently have, so what usually happens when I play is I'll collect 5 or 6 weapon upgrades to get the laser, only to get shot down to level 1 lasers. Now it's nice that if you're killed again after this, you only stay at level 1 lasers, but the climb back up to the wave takes so long that losing all of your work is much more frustrating than it is in Darius Gaiden, especially if you were only one upgrade away from permanently having the wave shot. This problem could have so easily been fixed by either sticking with the system used in Darius Gaiden, or just having a laser upgrade that gives you a wider shot with more lasers like how the missile upgrades work. Now I don't hate G Darius. I think it's very fun, but I don't know if it'll ever be one out, one CC, simply because of how frustrating it can be. At the recording of this video, G Darius is available on PlayStation and PlayStation 2, with the Switch and PlayStation 4 versions of G Darius HD set for a winter release. The PlayStation 1 version is slower than on PS2, making some parts a bit easier. New to this version is a pre-rendered intro sequence and a boss training mode as well as a beginner mode with infinite continues. The PS2 version comes on the Taito Legends 2 disc which also includes Darius Gaiden. This is a port of the arcade version and runs a bit smoother than the PS1 version, which in my opinion is a bad thing since it makes the game noticeably more difficult. The PS1 version runs at 240p while the PS2 version runs in 480i. I personally think the PS1 version looks a little better, but it's really not that noticeable. The gameplay you saw in this video was a mix of both versions, but if I had to pick one I'd stick with the original PlayStation version. If you've got a PSP lying around and know how to read guides on the internet, you could even put the PS1 version on your PSP. That's how I played it. Please don't think my criticism means that I dislike G Darius. I actually think G Darius is a great entry in the Darius game, only held back by its intense difficulty. I think it's more enjoyable than most of the earlier Darius titles, and I'm sure given enough practice and patience, I could get through it on one credit, but I would just rather spend that time playing Darius Gaiden instead. I'm Boffner, and thanks for watching. See ya! so hard to get around. Oh.